Your sorry ass out on the street. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lowdown Show Week number 20 right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are your Canadian Dirty Beat Podcast that reviews Raw and SmackDown Live from the past week. We also have our list of 10 segment, which is our segment. We have our top superstar of the week and our superstar of the week that makes the list of 10. We also have read your fan questions out there that you tweet into the show. Guys, I am the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. This is the corporate. <laughs> this is the corporate. This is the self. Oh my god, I'm botching hard. What the hell's wrong with you? I. Oh my god. You know what? It's probably because you want me to introduce myself, and I am the blissful boss, Mister Corporate himself, Corporate Cappy. You know what? I'm blaming it on this horrendous week we've had in the WWE. Like this was. This is up there as one of the worst weeks we've had of 2017. Even it, I'm, it's going to compete with some of the weeks we had in 2016, but this was bad. I after watching both shows, oh my god, what the fuck happened? Ever since SummerSlam, we're going on a downhill spiral. Just, just the, <laughs> we're eventually going to get to the bottom, and we're going to be like fuck WWE. Well, I mean, you're acting like it was good before SummerSlam. It was not good even leading up to SummerSlam. It was, it was better than we got this week. This week was atrocious. What do you mean? The opening to Raw was the best part. Anyways, guys, before we get all of that, you can follow us on Twitter at NoHoldsBardWP. You can also follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can follow Cobra Cappy at Cobra Cappy on Twitter. We're also available to follow on Instagram at NoHoldsBardWP. So go and give us a follow. As for listening purposes, you can either watch us. You get the live video version right here on YouTube, youtube.com slash NHBWR. Be sure to go over there and give us a subscribe and hit that bell icon for all upload updates. And if you want to just listen to us on the go, you, we are available on Spreaker, spreaker.com slash NHBWP, and also on iTunes and Stitcher. So go check us out wherever it's convenient for you to listen to us. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've, like, today, I, I contemplated on even doing a show just because of this week. I don't know what it is. I just, I feel like Derby was extremely, like, beyond lazy than they have been in the last couple of weeks this week. I don't know what the hell happened this week. The decisions they've made, the, the direction they're going with in some feuds. It's like, seriously, I think a group, I think a, a, a room full of monkeys they have no idea what the fuck they're doing would book better than what we got this week. <laughs> this week sucked. It, it was bad. I mean, I don't know how NXT is going because NXT is happening right now as we speak. But Yeah. It, it's, worst, it, it, it's worse that Monday Night Raw had to rely on a shoot promo to be anywhere good. Can you imagine if that didn't happen this week? How bad Monday Night Raw would have been? It, like, SmackDown barely made it. Like, barely. If it wasn't for Shell and Benjamin, I don't know what the fuck would have happened on SmackDown to make it anywhere good. But holy crap. They need to literally, like, wake up and start booking this shit properly because it's sad well, how people of, uh, on the internet can book a, a way better show. Well, how? What is the excuse that they can't book a good show? I don't know. And with the, with the talent they have on that roster, it's inexcusable. It doesn't make any sense. Greg's in the chat. What's going on, Greg? I don't understand. How do you not sit there in a room and be able to come up with a good show, a book, a good show? We give us this crap, but it's like, what? What? You really thought that was the best idea? To book Jinder Mahal is still your WWE champion and what you're fucking doing to Shinsuke Nakamura. You think that's a good idea? Yeah. Stop. I'm going to start calling you Michael Hayes if you keep agreeing with him. I mean, that Jim guy, is, all the Jim fucking creative look, people, man. Road Dog. I don't know what the hell is going on with Road Dog. For for a bit, it looked like SmackDown was doing good. Back, you remember when the draft happened and then back when, uh, after the first shakeup, SmackDown was okay. But, like, what the fuck happened, man? Is this going back to when there were, like, the rumors that Vince McMahon shook up some creative people during the shakeup? That's why they, they took all the good creators. Because when SmackDown was good... I get we give them all praise. Now, did they take those creative people and move them over to Raw? Because now, right now, Monday Night Raw is better than SmackDown, which is sad. 
<laughs> it's sad because it's barely better, but it's better. I just I don't understand. And it, what Greg says in the chat, why is Rainier and getting another opportunity at the WWE title? It's because they don't know how to book shit. <laughs> they have the talent to boost up and, and become a WWE championship number one contender, but they don't do it. They rely on the same three fucking people all summer. Why? To me, it seems like they have the wrong guys in the main event picture. They, well, they <laughs> they fucked up when they they gave the the championship titles to the wrong people. Like they 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 went backwards. AJ Styles should be the WWE champion right now, and then Jinder Mahal should be the US champion. And the roles on the TV show should be going in the same route, like or going in reverse. Jinder Mahal should be trying to do this stupid open challenge thing. And then AJ Styles should be doing something with the WWE title. Not necessarily facing Randy Orton all summer, but going in a different direction. To me, the reason why SmackDown's failing is because it starts from the top. I mean, if you're a WWE champion, your, your main title holder on your show is, sucks, then it's just going to negatively affect the rest of the show. And Jinder Mahal's the worst. I said it before. He's the worst <laughs> WWE champion they've ever had. He's got, he's got awful. The shit we've seen this week. Holy crap, man. The Cricketsville. They're in Cricketsville for one. Cricketsville wasn't even having it. You mean Little Rock, Little Rock, Arkansas? You think that the town where they don't know anything about a guy like Bobby Roode didn't give a shit about Jinder Mahal being a WWE champion? They didn't give a shit about anybody. They were crickets for all the entrances. This is sad. Jinder Mahal should not be WWE champion. Well, Plain and simple. The big dogs here. Yep. Oh, well, the big your boy dog. definitely got buried this this week. Holy yeah. hell. Jim, <laughs> Juggy Brown, man. Your guy got eaten alive. And your guy forgetting his freaking lines, too. What the <laughs> fuck was that? We'll get into that later. Yeah, so, but we want to get into this dumpster fire, the hashtag dumpster fire that I, WWE stole from us. I don't even fucking want to do the review. I don't want to talk about either show. They're fucking bad. I'm just going to quit now and go watch NXT. Maybe I'll do an NXT review after. Because that will be worth talking about. Because with the what I've read about the, I guess, I guess potential spoilers. Spoilers for NXT are fucking everywhere on Twitter. But uh, what I've seen, it's it's all going to be about the takeover of Adam Cole and uh, Red Dragon. It's going to so, be awesome. Which is way better than anything WWE's booking how on the main can, right now. They're that too. How can NXT book a better show than both Raw and SmackDown put together? And that's only a fucking forty-five minute to an hour show. And look at the talent that WWE has taken from NXT. And it ruined. Completely destroyed. All of them. All the call-ups. Look at them all. They're all failures. And Juggy Brown, we, we have... all go back down. Juggy Brown, I don't know if you've heard. The reason they're doing uh, Reigns and Cena actually right now, that wasn't actually supposed to happen. But the reason they're doing it right now is because Smojo got hurt and he's out four to eight weeks. Which is huge. So the injury bug still going around. And that's why... That's their excuse for Reigns and Cena. You couldn't think of a fucking better... You, you couldn't do anything else, right? Oh, but just because Samoa Joe got hurt, we have to rush Cena and Reigns? Well, like you always say, they got to they gotta pull the trigger right away. What do, you, what do you mean? Yeah, fucking... It's like a machine gun, these guys. Exactly. Anyways, we'll fucking talk about it. Why not? Monday Night Raw. Holy shit, dude. That thing was a snooze fest. That was like drinking NyQuil. <laughs> From the start. Yeah, okay, whoa, we had a battle royal. I don't care. You had the wrong yeah. people in the battle royal. It was a mix of, like, tag teams and lower Jobber. card and upper card people. And it's like, what the fuck? What? How did you even decide these people? Honestly, Finn Balor stuck out like a sore thumb. He was 100 times better than anybody else in that battle royal. Yeah, I remember you saying that. and just like, I felt bad for him having to be associated with the rest of those people. Yeah, and maybe yeah. Elias Sampson. I mean, I, I would say he was upper level in that match. I, I had the cup of bleach ready to go as soon as the first entry come out. <laughs> I was dying. As soon as you hear the fucking big show, it's like, no, I'm done. I turned off my TV. I went upstairs. I took my shit. I'm fucking, I was done. There was no way I was going to watch the rest of it. I was contemplating on just turning it off and going to bed. How yeah, do you get I mean, me hyped for a battle royal when fucking the King Kong Bundy lookalike fucking comes out? <laughs> <laughs> He's the guy to start the battle royale. Are you fucking kidding me? How, How does do he you deserve... get excited for him as the first entrant? How do you give this guy an opportunity to be the Intercontinental Champion once again? How does that fucking make sense? Big show. <laughs> I 
<laughs> I loved it. Makes no sense. Absolutely no sense. The... I couldn't believe some of the guys they had in this match. Like, Kurt Hawkins it was in there. Goldust was in there for some reason. Well, this all happened because Miz came out to start the show and claiming that the uh, no one uh, no one respects. It's all dis- I hate this, this. I hate the disrespect, like, direction that some heel wrestlers go. Fucking it annoys the hell out of me. And then Miz pulling it off. I'm like, come on, really? We've seen better promo work than Miz, and we got that shit this week. I don't know about that. Anyways, Kurt Angle interrupted him and blah, 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 blah. It turned into a uh, Intercontinental Championship Opportunity Battle Royal because Miz <laughs> wants uh, to defend his championship, more opportunity to defend his championship because he's talking about being in the pre-show at uh, SummerSlam, which in, in a way he's right, right? He, the, the Intercontinental Championship wasn't even defended at SummerSlam, yet Miz was pushed all the way to the front of the pre-show, the, the 545 slot. When there's only like 200 people in the arena because the Barclay Center forgot to open the doors. And the matches we got in the main show were just absolutely atrocious. <sighs> but Stress. We get to the Battle Royal and it was predictable. We knew who like the final four were going to be. Thank God it wasn't fucking King Kong Bundy over there. Like He looked like King Kong Bundy. <laughs> Literally people put a side-by-side picture on Twitter. The guy fucking looked like King Kong Bundy. Why did he completely shave his head and beard? I have no idea, man. Big Show. Well, Big Show really always had like kind of like a bald head, but like now he just looks even more bald now that his beard's gone. Like it takes away from everything. You just see the clear picture. <laughs> he just looks so fucking weird. It was great when he came up. Somebody had a picture comparison with him standing beside Kurt Angle, and they're like, "Wow, Kurt Angle's next illegitimate son." <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'd say King Kong Bundy's a legitimate son. So the ending of this match wanted me have wanting to drink bleach. Oh, yeah, so my I, God. I passed you the shot. I, I you know what? I know you hated the end. I, I'm saying I hated it too. I don't think Jeff Hardy should have won this match. Jeff Hardy and Matt Hardy needed to stay together so that the broken gimmick would finally, you know, come out or if they want to be awoken or whatever. And I don't know what the fucking the deal is. We're getting no information about what the hell is going on. I'm hoping this is like a one-off, one-week thing for – for Miz, like to just say that he faced Matt Jeff Hardy and beat him. Yeah. I'm hoping to God's what it is. Everyone who are like the Jeff Hardy people out there, like fucking relax. You know he's not going to win. He's not going to be the Intercontinental Champion. Everyone, chill out. I, just, I, just, I, All I don't. The Jeff Hardy fangirls on Twitter. Oh my God. And I don't understand why do you? How do you people out there sit there and accept Jeff Hardy out of other people in this match that deserve the better opportunity than him? As taking much again, as Je- taking away spots from younger talent. Exactly. Jeff Hardy's had his fucking run. Why does he need another number one contendership match or another title match for the IIC title? Why? Why? They're supposed, they're supposed to be bringing, uh, building up Jason Jordan, and yet he looks like a complete joke. He hasn't won a match in like three weeks. I could have accepted him winning this battle royal. You know why? Because then that's like something that he can go to his dad and be like, look, I'm proving myself to you. I just want a battle royal with like people in there that are like top contenders in this company. Oh, that would have been more credible. Or even Finn Balor. What the fuck is Finn Balor doing right now? Obviously no, now we instead, know because no, Bray Wyatt. He had to continue Bray Wyatt feud for some reason because, you know, the Demon King at SummerSlam wasn't enough. We have to see the shit again. Why the fuck do we have to see this again? Is he going to be the Demon again at No Mercy and then he's actually going to lose? To, we're going to have the Demon lose to Bray Wyatt? I well, thought the point we was... we have this again? I thought the point was to keep the Demon gimmick... A, like a, a separate thing, like a hidden thing. And when it came out, it's it's like a, a one thing that, that Finn Balor uses to win a match. Like you can't have the Demon Balor lose matches. But knowing WWE, I think it's going to happen. And it's sad because that's like the worst booking in the world. But uh, yeah, so it looks like that feud is continuing. Who cares? Fucking cares. Jeff Hardy wins. We're getting the Intercontinental Championship match next week. It is what and it is. I wanted to drink bleach and we'll move on. <laughs> oh man so we we get uh, uh, more of this uh, Enzo Mori being in the 205 live division and again, I did say okay I'll, I'll admit I did say I thought it would do good it would do good for him like I thought for sure we were going to get a boost in the 205 live division there was potential there but so far it's just like oh this probably was like the worst idea possible <laughs> he's just so cringe and he can't he just doesn't look like he fits in. He's what are we talking, talking about again? Enzo Amore. Oh God! Did you, just, did, you lose, did you leave for like the last thirty seconds? No, I was I was talking to Juggy in the chat. Oh, 
Um, I well, I guess I'll repeat myself. I said that uh, I said before that I, I thought there was potential and Enzo being in Tool Five Live, and there was going to be something there. But so far, it's been terrible. It's like the worst idea imaginable. He's just See, been I so don't cringe. Mind it. I, I but... think he's been cringe. It, 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 what I saw on 205 Live this week, I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. He had Grand Metal Leak and Cedric Alexander doing the fucking Enzo dance or, trying, or attempting at it. I'm like, no. Do not bring this cringe bullshit to 205 Live. You already fucking ruined it enough. You don't need to do this anymore. He should be being a little bit more serious, this guy. Anyway, he's got a match with Noam Dar. Just, it didn't look like he fits in 205 Live. He has, like, a different style. It's more like, again, like he said on Twitter when the rumors first came out, he's like, no, I'm 206. I kind of got to agree with him, man. I don't think he should be in that division. But, again, he, he's burned too many bridges backstage. He's just like, that's, like, the only place where they can stick him. Unless they really wanted to bring him back to NXT, which I, I wouldn't mind. But it'd just be the same thing as being in 205 Live. He just, like, would stick out like a sore thumb and you wouldn't know what to do with him. So... We'll see what happens, but so far I'm not liking it. Uh, he beat Noam Dar this week. Great. Oh, Great. what did he? What did he call him? No, oh, not Noam Dar. Noam Dar. Yeah, Noam Dar. Noam Dar. Yep. Juggy oh drinks God. hot tar. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> um. So we had uh, Brock Lesnar actually appeared on the show this week. Shocker! Wow. That was a shocker Holy and a half. Shit. Actually, to be honest, I don't, I don't remember him being advertised for uh, Raw this week. He might have, but I didn't see it. Um, we just cut the usual Paul Heyman promo. They're talking about Braun Strowman. It was weird. The promo from Paul Heyman we got this week. It literally was all building Braun Strowman up. None of it was like tearing down Brock Lesnar's next opponent, like you usually see out of Paul Heyman. Uh, Paul's a business. Paul's a businessman. He knows how to build a fight. Yeah, but he was more like building Braun over, like building Braun over Brock. It, it sounded like like he was saying that Braun is going to destroy Brock Lesnar. Like he was building him up a little bit too much, I think. It was like I don't know. It, to me, it felt kind of weird and a little awkward. And it, <laughs> best part is just like Brock Lesnar steals the mic from Paul and I'm like, oh god, here we go. What the hell is this dope gonna say? Yep. <laughs> Suplex, Suplex City, City bitch. bitch. Like that's wow. Hold the mic. So creative, yeah. Brock Lesnar. So fucking creative. Probably didn't say, get Braun Strowman, get your ass out here, boy. Yeah, I'll see your boy. Let me give you a suplex, boy. They were in Little Rock. Ah! Yeah, he didn't do his girlish scream either, so. And I yeah. thought Braun Strowman would come out, but he didn't. No Braun this week. What the fuck was that? Oh, hold up. Isn't, might... isn't No Mercy in, like, two weeks? I don't Where know, the Braun would have got, like, the biggest pop ever in Hickville, wherever they were. Why is there no build for this? Why the fuck did we not get an answer from Braun Strowman? Why didn't he come out and like they attacked each other? I don't fucking understand. You had Roman You had Roman and Braun attack each other for weeks before their match. Lesnar comes out, cuts a promo on him, and it is Braun just like what, not gonna come out? That's not like you don't build a monster among men now to just sit in the fucking back and, and accept this promo. Well, look what he did last week. He kicked the shit out of Lesnar last week, and then he doesn't build off it this week. Like, why? Terrible. Like, this is why I mean is like the worst week in WWE. It doesn't make any sense. There's they're building two weeks to a raw pay per view, and they didn't fuck all to build build to that pay per view. (laughs) This is why pay per views are doing shit because you're not building properly. This is why they should just scrap the friggin' all the papers they have once a month for the single brands. They're awful. No one cares. Anyways, um, Seth Rollins faces. I don't know why Seth Rollins and, and, Amber, and Dean Ambrose are facing Cesaro and Sheamus again. I thought Sheamus was going to film his movie. I don't know why the fuck he's still here. I don't and know why we got two singles matches. I don't know why we, we're continuing this feud with these guys. It doesn't really make any sense to me. I don't know why the Hardys are not getting in on this. Why are we reverting back to the same feud in the same match we already fucking seen? Before their match, we already seen these guys face each other one on one for weeks. But why are we getting it again? Why are we getting this rinse and repeat bullshit? This is what I mean. This is like the worst we can do to be. It's like they all fell asleep backstage and just hit the replay button. Fucking Awful. terrible. Both matches were terrible. I didn't care. I've already seen it. Give me and something course, new. And of course, both teams win one of the matches. Shocker. 
Give me something new. I don't care about this. I don't care. I'm moving on. I don't care. Until they give me something worth watching in this feud, I don't care, and I don't. I will not talk about it. I don't care. Why do I have to sit here and review shit that I've already reviewed for two months? I thought we were going to get uh, Rollins and Ambrose versus the Hardys, and then they just completely forgot about that this week. No, we have to give a, Jeff Hardy and I, a random IC title match, which he's probably not going to win. That makes like, sense. What was, what was the point of putting them... In that match last week, and then now all of a sudden yeah. Jeff Hardy's going for the Intercontinental Championship. Yeah, and like what like, Michael Chow just said in the from? chat. Michael Chow just said in the chat. They're tag team champions. Why are they not competing in tag team matches? Why are we show? We know what they can do in singles. Why the fuck do we have to see them? Not why? Why can't we see them in a tag team match? Have Have you seen the the tag team division lately? It's all singles guys put together. <laughs> they got rid of actual real tag teams. I thought AOP was supposed to debut sometime too. Where the hell are they? I guess I'm going to have to watch NXT tonight and see what happened. Great. They can put me to sleep even more. <laughs> hey, at least it's a tag team. Well, I don't want to see Cesaro and Sheamus for the next two months. Um, Mickey James face Emma. Who cares? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Emma's got <laughs> a new theme that's like, like the worst theme. Emma has got the, a new theme that's like the worst theme I've ever heard in my entire life. Apparently, it's not even by CFO Dollar Sign. They actually came out and tweeted that it, they didn't make that theme. So whoever made that theme... Oh my god, that is terrible. Why didn't they just keep her old theme? Why did they have to change it? What the fuck was wrong with her old theme song? It fit her her style. It fit her gimmick. It fit her look. She looks stupid doing the same entrance to that new theme song. It literally was the worst thing I've ever seen. It's like Brock Lesnar without Pyro. Yeah, the hashtag, man. It's all about hashtags. And now, like, Emma keeps coming out and saying that... Uh, she, she started the women's she started revolution. the women's revolution. What? what the fuck is this? Where is this going to lead to? Yeah, I, I, I <laughs> be facing the club. I agree. I had fantasy bookings in my head. I think uh, Paige is going to come back and question Emma about starting the women's revolution because really, Paige was part of the start of that. If you remember, uh, remember there that? we go. Well, I didn't. I, she's not the only one. Relax. <laughs> Fucking chill out. It did start with her coming up to the main roster, though. You can't can't say it didn't. Oh, AJ Lee is literally the queen that started it. AJ Lee started it, and then they brought up Paige to feud with her because that's something different, something we needed a spark in that division, which led to uh, Stephanie McMahon bringing up Charlotte and Becky Lynch on her team and then bringing up Sasha on Team Bad, which that was like the worst team I've ever seen because Tamina oh, was yeah. per- pretty much because Tamina was part of it. If Tamina wasn't part right. of it, I think there was potential. <laughs> and then you... No, what do you mean? Nikki Bella started the women's revolution, didn't you know? Like... I'm not. I'm not even gonna give that an answer. Uh, all right, see you. Um, see you in a bit, Juggy. Yeah. Uh, um. But yeah, the Emma thing. Like, what the fuck was that? Like, on like, can they not build a secondary feud in the for the women on Raw? Like, are we just gonna keep getting Emma? Just no. It's because they, they they get lazy. They 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 sit there and like they mainly focus on one thing in the women's division, and the other thing they just don't give a fuck about. They'll. They'll throw up a, uh, an idea on the board. Yeah, why not? You know, we're not. That's not our main focus. So we'll just throw it out there. Who cares if and we they, get a reaction for it or not? They don't even continue with it after. Like they have, she faced Dana Brooke one week, then she faced Mickey James one week, then she faced someone. I can't remember who the hell she faced in the other week. Then, but we, just, we know what the reason why, why Dana Brooke's not here, feud. which is sad. But um, I don't see Mickey James and Emma continuing. And why would it? Because I don't. I wouldn't care. Sure, if they can have a match in a pre-show. I don't care. I'm not going to watch the pre-show. They don't even make a feud out of it. All they do is have a backstage segment where Emma's talking about her st- on her stupid phone. Like, why do I care? I, it's sad too. Emma's such a Emma. They could use Emma so good in this division, but no, they don't. They don't. No, Raw only wants to focus on the main title picture. That's it. So I feel bad for girls like Mickey James and Emma, and even Alicia Fox to a certain extent. They don't get used at all. Or don't get showcased whatsoever. Again, like I said, there's no excuse for this lazy booking. It's ter- what What's their excuse? Why and why are people on the internet and on Twitter accepting it and saying, "Oh, you people complaining out there, you're, you're still going to watch it, and you might as well just accept it"? No, why do I have to accept terrible booking? Why do I have to do that? I want better booking. I want a show worth watching. That's why we complain. We don't complain just for the fucking hell of it. 
I don't know what's going on with Summer Rae either, Michael Chow. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if she's ever coming back or she's going to transition to Eva, Eva Marie and just become a model. I mean, it would work for Summer. She's hot as hell. So, um, Move on to... The best part, the, the only best part that was on Raw. Literally, and that's because oh, there was yeah. a fuck. That's because there was a fuck up. So one thing is that we we have to have a contract signing for for Roman and Cena, and this is only happening because Samoa Joe got hurt, I guess, and now he's out four to eight weeks, which actually really sucks because he, he without him now, maybe that's why Brock Lesnar was on the show. Like without him, that's gonna take a huge hit to the main card picture. Oh yeah, the show is one of the MVPs in Raw, and again, another WrestleMania quality match that they're giving us at fucking no mercy, a B level pay per view. They don't need to do this. Just because Samoa Joe is hurt doesn't give you an excuse to give us a Mania match at fucking no mercy. I thought they were going to have Roman go after Miz's IC title. That's what should have happened. Why wasn't he in the Battle Royal? They're, that's pro- Okay, they're probably saving that now. Guarantee that's still in the back of Vince McMahon's mind. They're still going to have this match. And Roman's still going to win this title. And they're gonna, Vince is going to have his ultimate fantasy matchup of Brock and Roman title for title. With Roman winning, and then Vince is just gonna get you know get off so huge on that, and you know think he's like the greatest Booker of all time. Meanwhile, he's the worst Booker of all time. <laughs> and yet the fans are gonna revolt. Yeah, I don't think he knows how bad that's gonna be. So you're like the internet community. As much as he thinks it doesn't matter right now in the internet community, it does because they they love the internet feedback. They love people commenting on social media, and they're all about that. So. Anyways, there's got to be a stupid for some reason. There's got to be a stupid contract signing for this match. I don't yeah, know that why. Not to be the fucking promo of the year by Cena, but and only because Roman. Can you imagine if Roman Reigns didn't forget his lines? And because up until that point, it it was okay. It wasn't great, but it was all right. I think if he didn't forget his lines, I think it would have been okay. Like I think we would it would have ended and be like, nah, whatever. They probably would have punched each other. It is what it is. But because he forgot his lines. I think I actually made it probably promo of the year because that was shoot promo of the year. People are on the internet saying, well, they weren't shooting. This was an actual promo. How the fuck was this an actual promo? There's no way Vince approved any of this. What what, what <laughs> transpired? Vince did not approve any of that. They edited that YouTube video so much. We missed out some of the key points that they both said to each other in that YouTube, in the Derby worry, highlighted I've, version. I've got it. I've got it on... Uh... If you want me to read some of the key points, it was fucking... I would love to hear them again. Um, so, Reigns called Cena a part-time fake-ass bitch. Ooh. Oh, yeah, sure. Vince approved that. I'm sure he did. <laughs> but um, he, like, he, he paused. He's like, he had this, like, this list. He's like, number one, such and such and such. And then number two, Roman kind of stopped. And yeah, then, like, and Cena goes, go ahead, find it. Oh, wait. It's called the promo, kid. If you're going to be the big dog, you're going to need to learn how to do them. Ooh. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, and then we'll get into the 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 heart of the promo. Rain, Roman just like stands there, forgets his fucking lines, and all of a sudden starts going off on a shoot. Like there's like you said, there's no way Vince approved that. No, there's no way. But the stuff that they said that was like such wrestling internet mark talk that they were saying, like there's no way he approved all that. No, there's there's absolutely no <laughs> way that any of this was approved by Don or Hayes or whoever the hell approved scripts back there. I know it all comes down to Vince. There's absolutely no fucking way that he accepted this, but okay. it was so good. So, so we got to we got we got to talk about this because this was like amazing. Like Cena just absolutely roasted this guy. So mm-hmm. he goes, "It took you five years to cut a halfway decent promo, but I'm gonna cut you down to size, dude. I can't tell if you're blind or stupid." Look, listen, pointing at the crowd. They hold the keys. They always have. They always will. Oh, my God. And then uh, then he starts talking about the U.S. Open Challenge. And he goes, well, I defended the U.S. title in an Open Challenge every week and promoting new talent like Kevin Owens and AJ Styles. And, and what John Cena said few. here, he was right. He did make it meaningful again. Now, right now, the U.S. Open Challenge on SmackDown, after what I've seen this week, I don't give a fuck about it. Okay, well, not even talking about that. Just even when Roman had the U.S. title, he didn't yeah. do fuck all with that at the end of last year. He did nothing with it. When Jericho beat him for it, it was like the best thing that happened all year. And mm-hmm. he goes, then Reigns, uh, he, or Cena goes, I blame you. I'm still here because you can't do your job. You should be ashamed that I'm a part-timer because I can do this part-time better than you ever, <laughs> better than you ever do it full-time. 
Holy fuck. Like, Cena I mean, just he's after, right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, basically what you said there is like, I'm still here because you can't do your job right. <laughs> yep. Uh, and, he can, totally and again, out. half of it is he, he, it's not all Roman's fault. It's just the way he was booked and he was pushed down our throats. But again, he's not doing anything to help the fact that he's just god awful. He's not making anyone like him. He's not trying. It's like he's lazy. He's not trying hard enough. Like I don't, I can't sit here and tell you that Roman's going to put up a five star match because I don't. I've never seen anything interesting out of Roman's wrestling. He's got the same fucking like ten moves that he does every single match. You see, and then people are like, oh, everyone else has ten moves. No, but you see sh- different shit out of people. In other matches, like even when it comes down to a pay per view, you see a pay per view quality match out of the certain superstars. With Roman, it's like I'm just seeing the same old shit, and the same old charisma, and just is nothing. He's not doing anything to help himself get over. And I know he can't help it half the time. It's just the way WWE is booking him. But again, Vince McMahon, if you haven't seen it yet, John and you haven't heard, didn't you listen to John Cena clearly. He's never getting over. You're done with Roman Reigns. Move on. Try to find your next top guy. Because Roman is not cutting it. Neither will he. Um, yeah, I agree with that. And I agree, Michael Chow, that Cena was kind of hypocritical when he said that he doesn't bury talent, only the key, the fans hold the keys, which is kind of false because we see what Cena did to Baron Corbin. Yeah. But That was actually done to be burying Corbin because of what he's been doing on social media. So obviously they're going to pick some. They're going to pick John Cena to do it because he's the first guy in line to say, oh, I'll do it. <laughs> but for the most part, Cena was right about almost everything that he said. Yeah. And, like, this was the first time that I actually enjoyed listening to John Cena throughout the whole promo. Because it wasn't his typical never give up bullshit, all this yeah. garbage. And then Roman tried coming back at him saying, oh, we're, you're Mr. Part-Time, Mr. Showing Up on uh, more Good Morning America. I'm here we week in and week out doing what I do. Mm-hmm. Kicking ass. I'm like, all right, Roman. I think you guys uh, need to cut promos like this for the next two weeks if you're going to make this match anywhere meaningful. If they, if you imagine if they cut promos like this, which they probably won't because it's started to be, if they cut promos like this for the next two weeks leading up to their match, that'll probably be the most hyped match in No Mercy. Yeah, at least but why the, the fuck is it at No Mercy? Why didn't we, oh my Again, God, why I know. can't we wait for this match? It, it, it's, they, like what, it's like what they've done in the last couple of months. Why do we have to get John Cena and Nakamura on a SmackDown? Why did that need to happen? They rush these things way too fucking much. And then you got John Cena going around saying that, uh, oh my God, I just lost my train of thought. But he's basically saying that Roman Reigns can't hold, like, they want Reigns to be the next John Cena. Well, Cena doesn't see why they want him to be that, basically, is what he's saying. Yeah. And that's why he's still here. Nobody's going to be John Cena, which he's kind of <laughs> right. Yeah. Much as, I don't, much as I've hated the guy over the years, I mean, he is right. And then Roman comes out and says, I don't want to be the next John Cena. I want to be the, the first Roman Reigns. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Sick, Roman. And goes, I retired the Undertaker. Oh, like, my no, God. You... Oh, my God. You didn't retire him. He retired himself. He put himself in the retirement. You, how oh, can yeah. you even be proud of, to retire a, like a 52-year-old guy with two bad hips? How, are you, how do you build off that? How do you feel accomplished? You didn't beat Undertaker in the prime of his career. You beat him when he's literally on the verge of going to a retirement home. That's another thing that Cena brought up, too. He's like, you beat a guy way past his prime with a bad hip. Congrats. Yeah. That was another, like, Cena just absolutely went off on this guy. And I... <laughs> I agree that I think it was because Roman forgot his lines, and then they just said, ah, fuck it, we'll just go full out shoot. Yeah. Why not? And if they're trying to cover it up like it's not, like, there's no way you can sit here and tell me that that was not, that that was scripted. There's no way they would have come up with that script. No, there's not. But that that was, like, the best part of Raw, and then Roman throws the table over, and then for some god-awful reason, I don't know why, they always get used improperly, and again, we get another week of Monday Night Raw where, again, they're just used improperly. The, the club comes out. And I'm like, what the fuck? The club? Really? Why aren't they going for the tag team titles? What the fuck are they doing right now? They gotta come out and interrupt Roman and John Cena. That fucking makes sense. Sure. What good booking. Way to go, Vince. Way to go. Yep. They gotta get buried by these two fucks. That was like the worst match I've ever seen. Fucking, it was like five, it was like, what, four minutes long? Who cares? Who cares? And they did uh, an AA and a spear at the same time. Neat. I would have liked it better if one of them would have fucked each other over and the club would have got a win here. I would have loved that. That, that probably should have happened. 
But again, the the, the booking this week. Oh my god, dumpster fire. They they but, they had it all hot and, and and fired up with that promo, and then you gave us just you poured water all over it. Yeah, because like the, the where's the dissension? The deception, the dissension, the deception after the, that whole promo. Like they should be hating each other. Why are they teaming up? Right. And and if they're gonna team up, why isn't one fucking the other one over? Or right. attacking somebody after the match? Like it made no sense. It just completely ruined the whole promo because it just felt like okay, now they're just instantly tag team partners now, and nothing's gonna happen. Regardless, again, it's gonna happen. No mercy, whether we like it or not. They probably should well have a good match. No mercy. It's probably going to be WrestleMania quality. Suck. It's not at WrestleMania, but they're probably going to have a good match. So we'll see what happens. Um, I don't know. I I got a feeling like they're going to add something to this. Like there's going to be a stipulation, maybe. Oh great! Winner gets universal title. Winner match. Winner gets <laughs> universal title match. <laughs> yep. It's gonna happen. Um, I guess we'll just talk about the main event. Uh, your girl's going at it again for the Raw Women's Championship. Oh, my God. What the fuck was it? <laughs> and speaking of I, illogical booking. <laughs> I'm trying to restrain myself from completely losing my mind right now. Thinking about this again. They had a good but, match, but what the decision? Why? What is the point of having Sasha win the title at SummerSlam just to fucking lose it two weeks later? It makes no sense. Hot what? potato. Why, why, do they, they have, why do they have to have so many title changes all the time? Why can't we have nice long title runs for once? This is the terrible. longest reigning champion. We got fucking Jinder Mahal, who's the worst out of all of them. It's like when one we get flip flop title every it's fucking. Like, week. It's like when a bad thing happens. Like in this case, it's probably due to Bailey being injured. It's like when something bad happens, they automatically have to like they they scramble and the booking just becomes bad. You should have, like, backup plans in place that are actually half-decent. Not this fucking garbage where you have to hop a potato about whenever you fucking want to. It doesn't make any sense. You don't have to give us a logical booking for something that happens like an injury. It doesn't make any sense. Because guarantee if Bailey wasn't hurt, this wouldn't have happened. Putting, but now I don't know what, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. Putting my bias aside, because everybody knows and Sasha's my number one favorite. Why the fuck is she losing again? She has not defended the women's title once in four fucking times of holding the belt. I know you don't want to hear this, but to be honest, it, it, it's very, it's, it's sounding like it's going to sound bad, but she's not a great women's champion yet. She has, she's won it a lot, but she hasn't defended it once. Well, I mean, you can't blame that on her though. Like they fucking get her, let her have it for a week and get buried by Charlotte three times. And then they have her lose two weeks later to Alexa. Like, it just made zero sense. And, Why did they even take the title off of Alexa at SummerSlam to begin with and, if they're just going to do this crap again? And they make her the worst baby face i no, ever and they, heard. They make, they make her look like a joke. She's had four title reigns and never, hasn't defended the title successfully once. Like, I, I love like, her, but, like, how the fuck am I supposed to, like, try to back this girl when she can't even defend a, a title once? Well, once! And this is actually going into the, in how I book No Mercy – Looks like they're going in that direction. Looks like we're going to get a triple threat because Nia Jax came out, put Alexa Bliss on her shoulders, and gave her electric chair drop, and has turned on Alexa Bliss. Called it. I mean, it. I, I like that, it. but still, why the fuck did we have to have the title flip flop twice for that to happen? Watch, I bet you it flips at no mercy. Why Nia wins it at no mercy? Why did they not just have Nia help Alexa win at SummerSlam and retain, and then have her come in the ring and like hold her up the same thing and then do that? Why did they have to have the title change twice in two weeks? Like, you're literally making the making the titles look like such a joke. Like, it doesn't even matter if they hold the title. They're going to lose it in, in two weeks. Like, it just... No. Both I don't even want to buy terrible. the plaque now. I was going to buy the SummerSlam plaque. It never came out. Now it doesn't even matter anymore because she doesn't even have the title anymore. Yep. What a waste. What a waste. What an absolute waste. Of and that was your main make- event on Monday Night Raw. That was your main event. What I mean... Good on them for being the main event. I mean, I'm all for that, but, like... That was a terrible main event. That was the worst decision they could have made. The scene of Reigns promo should have been the main event. Oh, God. I don't know if I would have accepted that leading into the club match, because that would have been your main event match. <laughs> God awful. I mean, that's typical Raw, though. Tag team match to end the show. Look at SmackDown. Yeah. But absolute <laughs> terrible... Way to book the women's division right now. Absolutely atrocious. So, again, Raw was terrible for except for one thing, and that was because it went to a shoot promo. Other than that, Raw was absolutely garbage. 
Nothing happened on Raw that I liked. We got Elias in a random match again. I don't care. I forget who he even faced. Like I, I don't, don't even care. care. It doesn't make any difference. Nothing is happening on this show to make me want to fucking tune in next week. Like I, I just get don't care. Excited. I get excited for the women's division, but like now, like I'm just I'm just so pissed off. I don't even want to watch next week because I'm just so fucking disappointed in the way they're booking the whole women's division as a whole. Like I honestly don't think they know what they're doing. No, they don't. It's sad. Another burial of Sasha Banks. Yep. Beautiful. Monday Raw was buried this week. The whole fucking show. The whole three hours of it. That was three hours of my life I'll never get fucking back again. I'm giving it a one for the Cena shoot. That's it. Yeah, a one. One. All right, move on to the, the other dumpster fire show that happened the night after. SmackDown Live. And SmackDown Live has been the worst show in recent months. Oh, my God. It's been going downhill. And Since the since the shakeup, I don't know what they did to the show. Like we were talking before we went on the air. It's like they completely swapped creative Sorry, creative rooms, because SmackDown is a shell of its former self when the brand split first happened. SmackDown is terrible It's terrible in general. Look, they use people that usually don't get used this week, and they just buried them. What the fuck do I care anymore? Why well, do yeah, I get they... hype for people getting called up to NXT or appearing on the main roster when they don't fucking get used properly? I'd rather well... them stay down there at this point. Oh my god! Um, the, the the worst opening of SmackDown I've I've ever fucking seen. Jinder Mahal is the worst WWE champion they've ever had. He is god awful. Oh yeah. Elias faced Heath Slater's character from Southpaw Regional Wrestling. That's why I don't care. I don't care. The show is good. I don't fucking care about it being on Raw. Don't care. I'm not talking about. And then to make it easy to icing on the cake, your boy Jerry Lawler was on commentary this week too. So we're gonna talk about SmackDown and the <laughs> opening of SmackDown. Um, again, wor- wow. what the what the fuck was that? The- Why are the, the <laughs> Singh brothers kissing the feet of fucking Jinder Mahal? What the hell am I watching? I felt bad for them. They, their whole promo was complete cringe. Like it was so awkward. Jinder Mahal can't talk. There's no good Jinder Mahal promos. He doesn't know how to cut a good promo. He's terrible. He sounds like he's on volume five. They have to fucking probably turn it up backstage because they can't fucking hear the dude. They say the same goddamn shit every single week. And then he's talking. He's claiming that like Shinsuke Nakamura is getting the upper hand when meanwhile it's Jinder has been getting the upper hand every goddamn week on this guy. Don't make it sound like you're getting buried by Shinsuke. You're doing the, it's the complete opposite Jinder. Well, you're a little two stooges there. You're fucking burying this guy. Probably the biggest talent the Derby had in our main roster in a long time. Mm, disagree. But I like Shinsuke, though. But I'm not, I don't think he's as great as a lot of people say he is. Uh, you're crazy. But you're absolutely crazy. He's you not AJ Styles. Not at all. You, you can't just compare everyone to AJ Styles. Yeah, he's what? good. I understand that. But Shinsuke yeah. is up there. Yeah, but you can't say he's the greatest player person they've had that's a... i said one of the greatest i don't agree because he can't cut a promo yet how does that how does that take away from anything his wrestling his wrestling style no you said superstar in general you didn't say just wrestling whatever this is the worst opening of smackdown i've ever seen either way i don't care about shinsuke anymore anyway because they just completely buried him by jinder mahal so why do i care anymore he's, he's lost jinder mahal yeah he comes so... out he gets attacked. Randy Orton comes out for the save to promote their fucking little tag team match with Rusev comes out. Like, oh, this is a stupid opening of SmackDown. Oh, we get Rusev back on TV after his Buried Alive match. I don't want to talk about SmackDown Live anymore. Like, what the fuck? How does this opening of SmackDown get me to sit there and watch the rest of the show? Why do I care? This makes me want to flip the channel. No, wh- who wants to? Who actually was excited for that main event, that, that tag team match between Rusev Gender they announced that. I'm like, what? How is that good booking? Oh, my God. Anyways, uh, let's just talk about the highlight of SmackDown right out of the bat. Finally, we get Sheldon Benjamin back in a WWE ring. Finally, we've been fucking waiting for this for a long time. And he's teaming up with Chad Gable to face the Ascension. And... They actually yeah. had, like, a decent match. He looked pretty good. 
And there's a, you can tell there's a little bit of ring rust, but that's going to be quickly shaven off after a couple live events and a couple on-screen uh, matches. But Shelton looked pretty good. Shelton's uh, incredible, considering he's doing this at, like, what, age 40. Yeah, I'll give him that. It, I think there's a lot of potential here with Chad Gable and Shelton. Um, there's a little deception here and there. You can tell with the one tag where Chad Gable was holding the guy, and he kind of just pushed Chad Gable to the side and then grabbed him himself. But I think that's eventually going to happen. Chad Gable and Shelton are not going to stay tag team forever. Um, but for right now, this is really good. These guys should be feuding for the tag team titles. I don't know why they're fucking doing the New Day still and continuing with that shit. It's like we're getting continuation of feuds all around SmackDown and Raw. It makes no sense. You don't I need to give SummerSlam us... was supposed to be the end of the feuds, right? But this match was good. They had a good showing. Uh, I like their little tag team finisher they had, where where Ch- Gable threw. Uh, what's his face into uh, Shelton Benjamin? You get that that cool. I don't know what the, the fuck. Dirt. Move. Yeah, is that what it was? The is that the pay dirt? Yep, that was awesome, and that was the win. So good for them. I hope they they leave the Ascension now and do something better. But we're not going to because the New Day are feeding with the Usos. So hopefully Gable and uh, Benjamin get the next opportunity because we get New Day and Usos again for the third time. It's awful. How long is that feud going to last? Because there's no pay-per-view until the end of October. Or mid-October for SmackDown. Great. This is going to last a month? There's no way. They didn't even say... They, they didn't say at the next pay-per-view. They just said the next title match, uh, match they're going to have. So hopefully it's on a SmackDown and we get it over with. Because leading into that, we had the the tag team match between the Usos and New Day again. And didn't the even winner last got long. to pick the stipulation. How and of course, like a... Usos... Usos win with a cheap roll up, so they get to pick the stipulation now. How do we get? How do we get a quick four minute match from a twenty minute unreal match on SummerSlam? And that was what the pre show. Oh. What you tell me? You can't give a twenty minute match on a regular SmackDown like that. Give us something a good showing. These guys are competing for an opportunity to choose a stipulation for their upcoming title match. How are you owning it? Make going to make it four minutes? You have like the, the the cheapest win I've ever seen. Like the it was just so unexciting. And I watched. I'm like, this is like the the worst shit I've ever seen. It's so, terrible. Hopefully they get it over with on one of the upcoming. You know, the hashtag next week on SmackDown. Yeah, the hashtag but, next week. Um. So hopefully they get that over with, and they start a few with either Benjamin and Gable or the. the Brazongo, but we know that won't happen. Yeah, we, if we, they're, they're too busy in the fashion files looking at boxes with lights on them. Yep, season two of Fashion Files debuted this week. Oh my god. I I love the fashion files, but enough is enough. When are we actually going to see them wrestle? Why is this not solved yet? It was good for the first couple of weeks, but now it's just like, are we really just going to get them backstage? Is that their only, their only place now on SmackDown? Are we just never going to see them in a match? The backstage team. Because that's sad. That is extremely sad. Two guys are incredible talents. I don't know why they would not want them on TV. Yeah, Michael Chell is like, why new music for a show? I think Sheldon's new music is because uh, they probably don't have the rights to his old theme song. It's just like Drew McIntyre and his old his old theme. I don't think they have uh, the rights to them anymore. So I don't know. I don't know what it is. But uh, I didn't think their song was that bad compared to some of them that have come out lately. Was that both their song or was that just Shelton's? No, it theme? was their. It, they have a tag team song now. Oh, um, where they opened challenge by AJ Styles, so he brought it back, and it was this is terrible. This is like the worst oh open God. challenge I've seen to date. So we get the answer by Ty Dillinger. So we get a Ty Dillinger live TV match. Holy okay, shit! When's AJ the last Styles. time? Holy when, shit! When is the last time we seen Ty Dillinger on TV in a match, getting an opportunity uh, as a great opportunity like this? But they fucked it up. They nope. absolutely fucked it up. We could have had a potential for a good match here, but no. We have to stick Baron Corbin into this for some reason. And some a guy who I actually like Baron Corbin, but I don't care about him right now because they fucked him. They just they did completely buried his ass. What does he comes in here and attacks Ty Dillinger for whatever reason? Because he goes, "Oh, I'm supposed to be the open challenge." Well, I'm pretty sure Ty Dillinger's music hit first, bud. So, but then like he attacks Ty Dillinger. Why didn't just Baron Corbin go in and defend it against AJ Styles? Why did they, he revert it back to to Dillinger going in the match? Because Dillinger attacked Corbin again, and then I can't believe they even had the match because it was such a joke. It was a one-minute match. A 30-second match. A minute at most. Are you fucking they, kidding me? They, they completely buried Ty Dillinger. 
Not even that he's her hometown boy, but, like, why the fuck would they do that? Why is he on the main roster? Guys like him, guys like Sami Zayn, Mike Bennett, why the fuck are they on the main roster right now? Three guys that have extreme potential are being treated like fucking jobbers. Makes absolutely no sense. And this whole AJ Styles US Open Challenge could actually be really good if they put the time and let them have, you know, a 20-minute match time slot. Because Styles can have a great match with almost anybody. And him versus Dillinger would have been a great match to showcase Ty Dillinger and what he's able to do, no. like John Cena would do. We get the, the first Open Challenge. Yeah, we get the no. first ever AJ Styles Open Challenge, and it's a one-minute match. And it's a squash. Has he automatically Absolutely. tapped to the calf crusher? He made, like, he wasn't even, da- his leg wasn't even damaged. I don't understand. Yeah, and then we get Corbin and Styles stare down. Like, I don't, I don't care about a Styles Corbin match. To me, that's not a good mix there. And oh why God. is Corbin just all of a sudden forgetting about the whole uni- uh, the whole WWE title picture after he got fucked like three weeks in a row? Still, no, no sign of him talking about you know I, I deserve better because of my briefcase. Nope, just forgot about it. It's done. Why are they on the main? Why is Ty Dillinger on the main roster? I'm still trying to figure this out. It's a joke. It's a complete fucking joke. The guy's so over with the whole with a freaking ten chant, and the guy's a good good worker, good wrestler, and cut a good but promo. They, they, and they, said, they won't no. use him. What 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 does Vince have against this guy? He's got potential to make buttloads of money with this gimmick and everything else and merch, but you choose not to. Well, you look at all fuck? the NXT guys on SmackDown; they're all getting buried. God, I, just, I, I hate when people. To have the extreme talent to do something right in the company and can be used properly, but get fed to the jobber status, just like Mike Bennett gets fed to Bobby Roode this week. And like, Bobby not... Roode, oh my lord, the fucking. Last thing I fa- want to say is that I don't agree. I don't think that Dillinger should have won the match, but at least make him look good. Have a twenty-minute match. Have a really good match. Have Dillinger get some near falls on Styles and show what he can do. They could have had it. Should have won the title. They could have had it just like Chad Gable. Or remember when Sami Zayn accepted Cena's open challenge and had a really good match with John Cena for the, the yeah. U.S. championship? And he even had a uh, a, a damaged arm because he damaged it in his entrance. Exactly. So why can't we have that? Why Styles can put up a 20-minute match with somebody. It just makes no sense. And, yeah, going to what you said about Bobby Roode. He's, why, are they, why is he a face? That was cringe Terrible. this week. Him smiling and, like... Acknowledging the crowd cheering him. What? That's not the Bobby Roode we've seen in NXT. Why do we get this all of a sudden? Vince, what the fuck are you doing? Stop ruining good things. And then Stop he's putting your fucking theme. stamp on it. And then it's like, apparently they're going to change his theme if he turns heel. Like, why? He was a heel the whole time with that theme. What does it matter? doesn't make any sense. Vince is delusional. They're all fucking delusional. These creative people on the main roster, they don't know what makes anything good. So Mike and, Bennett gets fed to him. And, and that was it. Ru- in two weeks, we're going to not care about Bobby Roode as much as I hate to say that. He's going to just help keep either. slipping to, oh, my God. Little Rock, Arkansas. Please give him the crickets right now. This was Little Rock, Arkansas when Bobby Roode was making his entrance. This right here. That's all you heard. That's it. Unbelievable. Little, Little Rock, Arkansas, man. You just made the list for worst crowds. Yeah. I'm putting them on the list right now. Yeah. Bobby Roode wins against Mike Bennett. Who cares? Of course Barry, he won. Barry's Mike Bennett. They're showcasing Bobby Roode as a face for whatever reason. I guarantee you, oh. when we go to a live event in St. Catherine, he's going to be a heel because it's still NXT. Yeah, and it'll be great. It'll be 100 times better than this fucking Bobby Roode we're seeing right now. Why do, why do you have to change good things, Vince? You, you complain about all these good things happening in NXT and you want it on your main roster, but as soon as they get your main roster, you change it and you wonder what the fuck is going on or wonder why people don't get over or wonder why it's not working. It's because you fucking change it! Why change something that's working? He's the worst baby face ever. Bobby Roode should never, ever be a baby face. That character is not baby face whatsoever. Whose idea that was? I don't know what kind of crack they're smoking. Vince but. McMahon. It's Vince McMahon. Um, by the way, Little Rock, Arkansas was already on the list, so now they're on the list twice. <laughs> twice. Uh, 
So my boy Kevin Owens comes out to cut a, a promo being about being screwed by Shane McMahon. Shane McMahon comes out and they're they're yakking away about the officiating. You know, it was just it was a typical promo that didn't really like excite me enough. I know that these guys are going to have a match. Um, so Shane McMahon just basically tells Kevin Owens to clear the ring for the upcoming match with Aiden English against this guy, and then Sami Zayn comes out, and then uh, Kevin Owens joins commentary. And uh, about halfway through the match, Owens gets up, gets out <laughs> after like being like criticized by Byron Saxon the entire time he was on commentary. Uh, he goes into the ring, and uh, this is what I don't fucking get here. This makes no sense because any other match it would have happened. This match I don't know why it didn't fucking happen. Kevin Owens tells the referee to take his shirt off. The referee's like, "No, what the hell are you talking about?" Kevin Owens puts his hands on the referee. Grabs the shirt and takes it out. Why is that not a disqualification? Why is the ref not stop the match? Why all of a sudden, because Kevin Owens comes in the ring and rips the shirt off, is that not a disqualification? He puts the shirt on, and the referee doesn't fucking do anything. He doesn't ring the bell to end the match. He just gets out of the ring and says, oh, I'll accept it. Whatever. Sure. Just My boy Ryan Schran just, like, runs away. That doesn't make any sense. And if Shane was so, you know... Embarrassed about what happened last week. Why didn't he just come out again and just right? try to stop, stop Owens? <laughs> he was from just doing out. Something? What, he go back and see what happens? And, ah, fuck, I'm too lazy to go back in. No, look what he did last week. He came out and then took over as referee. Him and Owens should have had some kind of battle going on. But no. No. And he, he pop up get... power bombs Zane yeah. in a quick three count. I'm like, what the fuck? So you bury Sami Zayn. So in order, in order for us to get Owens versus Styles, we or Owens versus Shane, sorry. We have to bury Sami Zayn in a random match to be, uh, you know, because that because that makes sense. So you buried Ty Dillinger, Mike Bennett, and Sami Zayn all in the same goddamn show. And to make it worse, it was against fucking Aiden English, who is the <laughs> who's the jobber of the show. He's winning more matches than Dillinger and Zayn combined right now. I'm so done. I'm then, so fucking did, did done. Did anybody with this week. hear Aiden English's theme afterwards? He might have the worst theme in WWE right now. Why is everything what being in the changed? Fuck is that? Oh my god! Every single every single theme change or theme debut we've had in the last month have been the worst things we've ever heard. What the fuck is going on right now? Holy crap! Dunn's we are going into a downward spiral, and it's getting close. It's getting close to that PG era mark. It is getting so close to that mark, and I'm so scared it's going to cross it. Because right after this week, I'm, I'm sick. I'm, no I'm, excuse with the talent that SmackDown has on their roster. I'm sick and tired from this week, but wasting five hours out of my life for that fucking useless bullshit. Um, yeah, my ears hurt after Aiden English's theme. I agree, Greg. What the fuck was that? Yeah, the N- <laughs> SmackDown was an NXT alumni massacre, basically. All, All right. the good talent on, from, from NXT? Oh, you're going to go to SmackDown and get buried. I thought SmackDown was a land of opportunity for these guys. I guess it would be for Dolph Ziggler. I don't know what the fuck they're doing with him. They just have the, the th- three of the same goddamn promos in a row. Uh, him just complaining, complaining backstage. Like, what? Apparently next week he's going to do something about it. Ooh. I hope it's good. But just just after seeing this week, it's probably going to be bad. He's probably going to have a new theme too. What? Dolph Ziggler will have a new fucking theme. Complaining theme. Probably like a mashup of all the good people in the WWE. Um, maybe he'll uh, be taken credible. You know, he'll tell them to watch what he does to Sin Cara next week. You know. Oh my God. And then they're backstage thing with Naomi, Natalia, Ellsworth. And oh Carmella. my God! Can we talk about Naomi or Natty's new shirt? Another cringe. What the hell is that? What is that? If you buy Natty's new shirt, I have trust issues with you. What you, in the hell you... is that? If you go ahead and tell me you've bought a Natty shirt, I will send you free of charge a box of matches, some gasoline, and a barrel to put it in and fucking light that shit on fire because I don't know what the fuck that is. I gotta go look at it again because I can't even remember what the hell it's. I just know it's a cat on it. It's like an evil cat. Okay, hang on. I got it right Speaking here. Speaking of, the promo was just even worse. I don't care. Yeah, we I... didn't even have... We didn't even have a women's match this week on SmackDown. We had one of the worst promos I've ever seen. Something that I'm just like, after it happened, I'm like, okay. Did I actually okay. need to see that? Here it is. Paws out, claws out. It's meow time. Wow. And on the back, it says Natty Cat. Oh, my God. Like, Natty's a, 
is going to buy that. Natty as a champion goes up there with Jinder Mahal being champion. They're both the worst champions right now. They should not be champions at all. Why the fuck is Natty the women's champion? What is she doing for the division right now? Absolutely fucking nothing. She get, brings out a cringe t-shirt. And she, she has the worst promo I've ever seen. She keeps saying Bret Hart's fucking lines. They keep teasing Carmella cashing in. I don't care. I do not care. This division is horrible. Becky Lynch was not even on fucking TV this week. They have women on the division that do absolutely fucking nothing. And I am scared for Asuka to come up. I know she's not on SmackDown. I am so scared for her to be in the main roster right now because, holy shit, both divisions are fucking atrocious. We had Ellsworth cutting uh, cutting a nice promo. What do you mean cutting a nice promo? <laughs> He's in there with the cringeness. Like, I, it was just stupid. I didn't care about it. It just made no what? sense. Why Natty? Like just like we say about gender being the champion, Natty being the champion just brings the SmackDown Women's Division down for me. Like I'm sorry, like to all you Natty fans out there, like I'm sorry if I'm offending you, but like I don't care about her as champion. It doesn't add to the championship at all. She's I not don't, elevating it. To I me. don't understand how people sit there and say SmackDown was good this week. How? In what fucking way was SmackDown good this week? I really want to know, and I really want to know why you want to sit there and accept terrible booking. I really want to know why you do. Well, why? How, why do you you sit there and, and accept it? It doesn't make any sense. Speaking of the shop, I'm on it now, and the SummerSlam plaques are out. Oh. And we've got a plaque for Cass defeating Big Show. Why is that a plaque? I that's another call, thing I have. That a plaque about. will probably be on the clearance section in the next couple of months with all full in stock. I. Uh... <laughs> I honestly have told you about this many times. I don't know if you guys go and look on the WWE shop for their plaques. But, like, I can understand about the having plaques for, like, big momentous title wins. But they have some of the worst plaques for the most meaningless crap. Like, they have one for Big Cass defeating Big Show. Why is that plaque worthy? <laughs> I guess there's cares? someone out there who's a big fan of Big Show and Big Cass. Like, why are these plaques? Like, it's such a waste. Like, make plaques for momentous occasions like big title wins or first title wins for certain people like another one here we get randy orton defeats rusev plaque who the fuck's gonna buy that this is a three second match yeah. anyways women's division yeah both shows terrible but fucking tamina beat some local jobber in like 30 oh, yeah, we seconds did have a women's match my bad and uh tamina that's not even a match uh lana comes out tries building up tamina and then Tamina comes out and might as well play crickets again when Tamina came out. There you go. Oh my god. Who's who's gonna get behind Tamina? I really just don't want to talk about it because I don't care. This both I just don't care. Why don't they put Lana back with Rusev? I don't see the big deal in that. I just they don't put care. her they put her with Tamina, and after the match they have paparazzi's come in the ring and start taking flash photography. Of Tamina and Lana. Like, this is such an... Like, this is so weird. Like, I don't understand this pairing at all. Mm -hmm. And then they have... They want to talk about how this women's revolution... I mean, I mean, I I agree. I'm, I'm an advocate for them. One of the biggest advocates for them. With all the shit they're doing in the Mae Young Classic right now. And they give us this crap on the main roster. Mm. Like, to me, it's just like night and day. Like, look at what they're doing there. And even with building off the Ember Moon Oscar match to this shit that we're getting on the main roster now. It's pathetic. I really can't say anything because I don't care about it. <laughs> I can't care enough to give a review for this because my eyes bled watching this. <laughs> I had to get up off the couch and leave and go fix myself because what I seen on TV scarred me for life. Why does Tamina need a squash match? Why is Lana on TV? Why is Tamina on TV? Why do we have to have a terrible women's promo and no women's title match? Or, sorry, no women's, women's match with the, with the champion in it. Fuck out of here. Heaven forbid, they, here. heaven forbid Natalia defends the title at some point. This women's division is just as bad as when we had the Divas division. The SmackDown Especially division SmackDown. is awful, man. Like, I... I not even saying that because Alexa got taken away, but, like, that took away a lot. And, I mean, they're not using the women that should be used, like Charlotte and Becky. Where the fuck are they at? Charlotte, I think I know. Becky, I don't know where the hell. 
the two women that are actually good on the show, and you can put Carmella in there too. They don't use them. Instead, they want to use Naomi, Natalia, and Tamina. I don't know. What, they're like they're like She's upside down in. backward. Like they're literally like flipping it upside down where it should be. Same with the men's division. You know, Jinder Mahal should be a jobber. Let's put him as as the WWE champion. Let's just yeah, flip it upside sense. down. That makes sense, right? No, Jinder Mahal. Oh, because of his physique, that means he's WWE champion worthy. Get the fuck out of here. Don't give me this bullshit. Well, let's let's put Naomi and Natalia, who have been on the roster for about 10 years. Let's flip. The, they're probably the two worst women on the roster, but let's flip them upside down and have them be the best two women on the roster right now. Stupid. Stupid, stupid, illogical. Both shows were shit. I'm not even going to talk about the main event because that was the worst main event I've ever seen anyways. Um, Randy Orton RKO's Shinsuke after they won their match. Just promoting their one-on-one match. And the winner gets a dare to be title opportunity next it's week. Go- and it's gonna be it's gonna be Shinsuke. Shinsuke's gonna win. Guess what? It's gonna be a hell in the cell. So we're gonna get another structured match. And Heaven guess forbid. what? The Singh brothers are gonna get in that match somehow. And guess what? Jinder's gonna bury Shinsuke once again. And guess what? I do not give a flying fuck. And guess what? Great Kali probably comes out and helps him in this. And guess what? I will not be watching No Mercy. <laughs> um, No Mercy. That's a raw pay per view. Sorry, hell in the cell. Yeah, because honestly, why? Heaven forbid we have a tournament of some point, of some sort for number one contender for WWE title. But no, we're gonna get Randy Orton just given another opportunity again. Like, like Randy Orton needs another opportunity. The guy's had a million over the last how many years? Twelve years he's been there. Why does Randy Orton in WWE title picture in 2017? What the fuck? You have why, so many guys on the roster. I could get behind Randy Orton going for a mid-card title. Like, when was the last time he held a mid-card title? Like, when he was the legend killer? I think that was the last time he held a mid-card title. Why does he have to keep going for the WWE title? He does nothing with it anyway, so I don't care about him as the main champion. Just or even in the you, main title picture. You know why Jinder Mahal is the worst WWE champion right now? Because he can only do things with Randy Orton and Jinder at this moment. Or, sorry, Randy Orton and Shinsuke. I cannot see an AJ Styles Jinder match. I cannot see anyone else facing... Shins, or Jinder Mahal for the WWE Championship. He needs to lose that fucking title to either, and as much as I don't want to say it, Randy Orton, either Randy Orton or Shinsuke, and it needs to happen at the next pay-per-view or sometime in the next couple of weeks because it's bad. It's going down. The title is like the third best title, and it should be your number one. There's, they're, they're really hindering, and don't hinder Jinder, I'm not saying that, but they're really like limiting their options of what they can do with this title right now with Jinder holding it. Like, he I can't have matches with these other guys like AJ Styles. I don't give a fuck about the WWE title. I just don't give a shit. It's a shame, because it's supposed to be the best title we have, and yet we're getting I, this I'm garbage. supposed to care, and I just don't. Anyways, both shows got awful this week. Absolutely trash. <laughs> Did not give any shits even, about them. I can't even give SmackDown a 1. Like, it gets like a .5. Those are our lowest ratings we've had for both shows, uh, like side by side, in a long time. You can't. I can't even say that Raw wins with a one because that's pathetic. They passed with a one. Yeah. Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, we're just gonna have to uh, tune into the hashtag next week. And it's a shame because SmackDown was on such a good trajectory last yep. year and leading into this year, and then they. I don't know what the hell they did to this show. Yeah. We want That's to get right. behind the blue brand because it's supposed to be the. the I want to get behind both company. shows. I want to sit here and accept what Dirty gives me on a weekly basis, but I can't because it's shit. It's absolutely well, shit. They serve us I, a plate of bullshit every week. I mean, Raw's never going to change. Raw's always going to be the more entertainment esque show. Because that's what that's the type of you know sports entertainment we're in nowadays. I don't even believe that anymore. That's, not, that's where it should have started when it, with the, the, the draft happened. But since then, it's drastically changed. Both shows are just absolutely horrible. No booking sense whatsoever. Ruining NXT call-ups that should be main champions in this company. Sorry Fucking for ranting bad. a lot this week, guys, but this was terrible. You have to. When you get weeks like this, all you could do is rant. I can't sit here and be like, oh, I loved SmackDown this week. It was so good. <laughs> oh, and Raw? Oh, my God. It was so good. Um, did you see Big Show in the beginning, man? Oh, that was so cool, man. He shaved. He looked so awesome. And Oh, oh, the... like, oh Jinder Mahal? Oh, he was so good, man. Did you see how Jack he is? I love him, man. And t- until we stop getting those people Stupid. that praise this show, we're going to keep getting this garbage. If people actually, you know... 
gave a shit and revolted against this crap, then maybe they'd make no. a change. But no, we get the the corporate yes people that just say, oh, yeah, the show's good. And we get 80% of the people out there that just accept it, even though they know it's bad. They just accept it. How do you that. accept this mediocrity? Like, Don't I hear people, fucking accept people it. People were saying how good the U.S. Open Challenge was. I'm like, what were you smoking this week? How was that? Any- what? What? It was a minute long. Ty Dillinger got buried. We didn't no even get comment. to showcase AJ Styles or Ty Dillinger in a good match. Sucks. But, like, Greg, Greg. I agree that, that SmackDown's glorious, but at the same time, what the hell is he doing? To turn him face, good. and you're going to start to hate him, Greg. You're not going to want him baby face. I understand why you liked him as a heel, because he's the greatest heel I've WWE's like going to get in a long time right now. He's, he just fits that heel persona. But now they're going to change him baby face, and it's just going to be cringe. It's like making the Miz baby face. It's like, what? What? What's the point? Exactly. That is actually a perfect like comparison. He is exactly like the Miz. He only works better in a in a heel role. Now we're getting like him as a baby face. Like it just, oh, it's fucking bad this week. Bad. And I suck because I love Bobby Roode. Oh, God, ugh. Anyway, and, uh, move at on. Least hopefully next week when we see him at NXT Live <sighs> St. Catharines, he's going to be heel. Next week. Next week. Anyways, let's, uh, we got some, uh, I don't know if I'm going to have a, a 10 moment, but we're going to that part of the show, and that is the list of 10. 10. You know what? You know what happens? You know what's going to happen? You just made the list. That's right. Welcome to the part of the show, ladies and gentlemen. And that is the list of 10 where myself and Corporate Cabby, we give out our Superstar of the Week that makes a perfect 10 or that makes the list. And as always, we are going to start with Corporate Cappy. Wow. I'm, I was I was about to give two list moments this week, but you know what? I'm giving the, the 10 moment to the only Shining Star of the Week, and that was John Cena's shoot promo. Yep. I mean... What else can you say? John Cena just cut a savage like promo on Roman Reigns, completely ripped the guy apart, basically went like basically became an internet mark for that fifteen minutes that he was cutting that promo. <laughs> <Internet mark>. Um <laughs> basically what he was. Yeah. And who knows, we might have not have gotten it if Roman didn't forget his lines like a you know, a real top guy would like him. Yeah. But uh for John Cena just basically uh basically saying uh, like what we all wanted to say to Roman Reigns. <laughs> Yep, he gets a perfect 10. And he uh, basically said what, what needed to be said to Roman Reigns. <laughs> uh, yep, Rude is like Sasha. doesn't work as a baby face. You are right, Michael Chow, 100%. My moment, my first moment of the week is a... It's going to be tough to think of a 10 moment, so I'm going to get you give the first list moment out. And that goes hand-in-hand hand to both creative teams for Raw and SmackDown. You guys were fucking asleep. You probably took the same NyQuil that I wanted to take for both shows. You probably chugged about two bottles each. And just literally whatever came to mind first, you just threw it out there. And it was like the worst booking possible. How can you have... How, there's no excuse for the booking you're giving us right now. Absolutely no excuse. You can't sit here and tell me that's the only that's the best thing you can come up with. Bullshit. It's sad that the people on the internet can think of a 10 times better show on a weekly basis than you guys. And that's why you both, creative team for Raw and SmackDown. You know what? You just made the list. That's right. So I have a feeling you're going to have two list moments. So if you do, I'm going to leave Dillinger for you. And I'm obviously going to just say that my list moment is going to be the burial of Sasha Banks. I mean, what else could I say? Yeah. Like four time women's champion has not defended the title once successfully. Like way to bury one of the best talents the women's division has ever seen that we were supposed to see. And she always talks about how great she is, but then she can't go out and defend a title. Like how am I supposed to continue to get behind this girl where she continuously fails? Like, like Alexa said last week, the legit loser. I mean, Oh God. I mean, fuck, like, we're getting down that path, man. Like, yep. how do you have four title def- titles and not defend it once? Like, that's got to be a record. There's got, there's no way anybody in the history of this company has had four title reigns and hasn't defended it once. It's got to so, be. It's sad. It's sad it has to go to a girl like Sasha Banks who has the all, the, like, the 
immediate potential to be a Hall of Famer, man. She has all. She has the complete package. Yet they're not. I don't understand why they don't want to, to push her the certain way. Why do they have to hot potato her every time she gets a title? It doesn't make any sense. Why can't they book her like they were in NXT? She was such a great champion down in NXT, and she held that title for a long time before and Bailey she defended her. it. Yep. So for so the burial of my girl Sasha Banks this week. You know what? You just made the list. That must be sad for me to say that. I I almost like cried. Like it was it was that bad. Like Alexa won the title, but like I don't like it. Still, it makes no sense to me. Why have the title flop back and forth and to begin with? Just have right. Nia turn on Alexa right away. Right. Oh, unbelievable. And my next moment, and you called it, is a list moment. So I have a double list moment this week. And you're right. It goes to Ty Dillinger finally. And it's not really him, but finally he gets put on TV. He gets a chance. U.S. Open Challenge had all the potential to be something great. We could have had a match just like Chad Gable against AJ Styles. I'm like, okay, we're actually going to get an awesome match here by AJ Styles and Ty Dillinger. But no, interrupted by Barry Corn because Vince McMahon chooses not to push Dillinger or make him at least have a showcase. Nope, he gets somewhat hurt before his match, and he has like a 30-second match with AJ Styles, and that's the old U.S. Open Challenge. And that's probably going to be it for him to, to face AJ Styles anywhere again. Great. We have an opportunity to see a good Dillinger and AJ Styles match, and we don't fucking get it. You know what, Vince? Nose is vulgar as hell, but fuck you. How dare you? To a workhorse like Ty Dillinger, just bury him all the, all the time and, and every moment you get. You have gold in front of you with this gimmick. Gold. Pure gold. The crowd loves the 10 chance. They chant it when he's not even in the match. Unbelievable. And for that, for finally being on TV and getting buried. You know what? You just made the list. God damn. And that's putting all the bias and love aside for our hometown boy. Yeah. It's, it's sad. We'd be saying that if he wasn't from our hometown. Exactly. Like he's the perfect. He's got the perfect package. He's got the look. He's got the gimmick. He's got the theme song. He's got the crowd behind him. What more do you want from this guy? What you want him to get over? He's gotten over. What do you, what more do you want from the guy? Because he doesn't look like steroid Mahal. Unbelievable. I don't want to sit here and tell Dillinger, no, Dillinger, you should take steroids like steroid Mahal over there. You'd, maybe you'll get noticed. Maybe you'll be WWE champion for whatever fucking reason they want. So to add on to the Buried Alive matches that we had with Corbin, Rusev, and Shinsuke over the last two weeks, we can add Sasha and Dillinger to that. <sighs> we might as well just have a Buried Club, Buried right. Alive Club, because that's basically the, the path we're going now. I shouldn't make that graphic on <laughs> The Buried on Alive Twitter. Club. The Buried Club. Like, have, like, the, the main picture in the middle and have all the squared images of whoever's on it a circle around it. Yeah, I mean, we've got five. <laughs> I'll probably make that and put it out there. I, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Unbelievable. Oh, man. Again, it, this week didn't really deserve a 10 moment. I agree nope. that you gave it two list moments because it was that bad. Right. And I, I probably, if it wasn't for the John Cena shoe promo, I would have probably gave it two list moments, too. Yep. So... We're getting to that part of the show, and that's the end of the show where we have your fan questions out there. And uh, we'll start off with uh, Mason Dunbar at Mason Storm at WPC. He's got his own wrestling podcast. Go check him out. Uh, he puts, uh, what did you guys think about the match between Ty Dillinger and AJ Styles? <laughs> he thinks it was phenomenal. I'm not even I'm not even going to talk about that because we all know our feelings about that. We've ranted about it for about halfway through this podcast. I'm not going to talk about it. One thing, anymore. Mason, how was it phenomenal? They lasted 30 seconds. Don't accept mediocrity, Mason. Please don't. Don't do it. Don't don't give in to this WWE garbage that they want you to say this was good. Don't Please think don't. don't drink the WWE Kool-Aid. Do not do that. Anyway, Please, move Mason. On. You're better than that. Well, we got next week by Big Red Ragu. The Big Red Ragu finally has Twitter. It needs a uh Avid listener of the podcast. He puts thoughts on the Cena promo being scripted. It is not scripted. It was not. I know there's news out there saying it was scripted. There's no way. They're there's... trying to cover their ass. There's no yeah. way they scripted that. Yeah. No big, way. Big Red Ragu, don't buy into what you're reading out there. There's no way that was scripted. Again, like what Corporate Cappy just said, they're covering their ass. They're covering themselves. Making, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We, oh, we thought of that. You know, we, we put the script okay. out there. I'll give it to you. the The promo was scripted until Roman forgot his lines. Then it just yeah. went all haywire. Exactly. <laughs> so thanks for your input, Ragu. Yeah. 
<laughs> Thanks for your input. Uh, Glorious Greg at Xkilly929 questions. Here we go. He puts, should Ty Dillinger respond to the next week's U.S. Open Challenge after the short match this week with Styles due to Corbin's interference? Now, I kind of thought about something like this, Glorious Greg. You kind of bring up a good point here. Maybe they can do something with this. Maybe if they want, which... Uh, most likely, probably won't happen. They could have Ty Dillinger come, uh, come go to Shane McMahon or Daniel Bryan next week. And make look, listen, it's not really fair. I didn't get my fair opportunity at a U.S. Open Challenge. You know, like, give me another opportunity, AJ Styles, and ban Corbin from ringside. You know what I mean? And then ha- yeah. let them Heaven have. Heaven forbid they try to make their mis- to, to you know undo their mistake of this week. Yeah. I'd love to see that, glorious Greg, but honestly, it's not going to happen. Ty Dillinger is probably going back to the perfect dark match for a while until they can use him again. It's sad. I don't like it, but it's probably going to happen. Next question he puts, Raw was terrible. What did you guys think? Yeah. Terrible. <laughs> One good thing came out of it, and that was a shoot promo. But yeah, it was. it's in there. It's in, It's the dumpster fire Raw, man. I, I actually made a t-shirt graphic a long time ago, and it's still in my little save file here. And it says Raw equals dumpster fire. And again, that's true. This t- I should be printing that t-shirt and wearing it right now. Um... Next question from Glorious Greg. He puts, SmackDown Live was glorious. Of course he did. <laughs> what do you guys think the plan is for Bobby Roode on SmackDown? Ooh, that's a good question. I like that. So for now, it's a fair world tour in NXT. So until then, we're probably going to get the odd showcase match like we're getting now. First thing, I mean, what we're hearing from the rumors, and we don't know how true they are, is that Bobby Roode is going to be a, a top guy in the company. They're going to push him right to the top. Well, they better, but they can't do it as a babyface. There's no way. My honest opinion, though, since they are pushing him as a babyface, he's going to be the next guy to be, be Jinder, or face Jinder Mahal for the WWE title. Oh, my God. That's going to be awful. Bobby Either that. Roode, face Bobby Roode versus Jinder. <laughs> Either that or if Randy Orton wins the title and he's uh, a, a, a heel. Randy Orton, Bobby Roode. I'm just – like every time I see Roode, I'm like, okay, when's he just going to turn here? Because this is just – this is an act. Like this is terrible. Yeah. But then I don't really want him to turn because I don't want him to get rid of the theme song. Why do they think his theme is a is a baby face theme? Like, Why Fitz, were you the just not fucking? Issue? Were you just not fucking watching NXT at all? You had to, man, because you you wanted this guy so bad on the main roster. And he goes, oh, the heel's over. All most heels are over in this company now. That that's the people who get cheered now are mostly heels, right? This is what, why is he any different? Why do they need to change his theme? So. I can kind of see him being either facing Jinder Mahal or Randy Orton, Glorious Greg. That's who I think, uh, or that's what I think they're going to do with uh, Bobby Roode going forward once he's done his farewell tour. I don't know if you had anything different, but I really just I, I'm still on the fence about calling Bobby Roode up at this point because I don't like the direction that they look like they're going with him yet. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Uh, <laughs> Michael Chow actually put a good prediction. Shane will book Dillinger versus Corbin for the U.S. title number one contendership. I see that happening. I, can I see hope that. they do that. At least Dillinger can get a fair shot because that was yeah. that was atrocious. That was and that's a match. I you can say that I can't. I can't sit here and say that Dillinger is going to get buried because this is actually two guys that are getting buried right now, <laughs> facing each other. So the... <laughs> that's an actual buried alive match right there. Whoever loses that match is literally buried alive. Because. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly, and they're two of your favorites right there. Oh, God. Anyways, uh, next set of tweets comes from our Twitter fan of the year for 2016. That's right, and that is Michael Chow at Michael Chow TV. He won our 2016 Fan of the Year. And, guys, you want to win your the 2017 Fan of the Year, all you got to do is interact with us, and you'll win the 2017 Fan of the Year, and you'll get your theme song right before any of your tweets that get read right here on the show. That's all you got to do is interact, and you're automatically qualified for the Fan of the Year. And he's got his own wrestling podcast as well, guys, WWE MCTV. He's also on Spreaker like us, so go check him out. Go give him a follow and follow him on Twitter at Michael Chow TV. Really, yeah. really excellent wrestling podcast, just like ours, guys. He is our Wait. host from the West Coast. <laughs> he's done some collabs with us. So you can go check those out. Yeah. By the way, are we going to get the draft video up on YouTube at some point? 
Yeah, I just I mean to be making graphics, but I'm in the transition of uh, getting a new job, ladies and gentlemen. So I've been extremely busy the last two weeks working yeah. on both jobs. So well, once I'm worry. done at the, yeah, after up. this week, yeah, after this week, I'm done at the one job. So I'll have a lot more free time, a lot more free time to do uh, more videos and put some more stuff on YouTube and all that jazz. So yeah, we, we've tuned. got a lot of we've got a lot of stuff coming up. Yeah, bear with us. <laughs> Anyways, Michael Chow's tweets. He puts. It looks like they were going for Samoa Joe versus John Cena, but due to Samoa Joe being injured, looks like they rushed Cena versus Reigns. Is it the right call? Absolutely not. Bullshit. You really couldn't put Reigns and Miz anyways? You couldn't put Cena against, I don't know, someone that could, I don't know, Finn Balor? Duh. Why couldn't you do Finn Balor versus John Cena? Like a like a honest, I know they're both baby faces, but they could have had a good match. Or Why I could have, I could have stomached Cena and Wyatt again just to save Cena and Reigns. Or or, Elias Sampson. Yeah. Elias Sampson and John Cena. There's a way to build up another young talent. Or not and not bury him, Vince McMahon. Oh, you know he'd get Don't buried. Don't touch him. Hundred percent. Don't touch him. Oh, hundred percent. Cena would beat him. What are you talking about? Anyways, yeah, it was he got the golden shovel. Absolutely the wrong call. Uh, he puts thoughts on the Sasha losing the title. A lot of people are ranting about this, but I believe the original, or it, this was originally going to be for Bailey. Uh, I don't think Bailey was going to drop it here, but I think, uh, or maybe he, maybe she was going to win it here. Maybe she was going to lose at SummerSlam to Alexa and then regain it on Raw. That could, I could have seen WWE doing that. Maybe Sasha was supposed to be the one to turn on Bailey, not instead of Nia turning on Alexa. Who knows? We'll oh, never know. that that see, maybe that was the original plan, but no. Again, like I said before, an injury happens and then they just lose all. They just lose their fucking mind in all booking sense. I guess. No, th- I mean, should uh, I, if they were just gonna do this, th- Sasha shouldn't have won the title at SummerSlam to begin with. They should have just left it. This was stupid. I don't want to rant about it again because I'm just sick and tired of talking about it. Yeah. Um. He puts, "Would you like to have Styles versus Dillinger at the next pay per view? Then Baron Corbin." Then Baron Corbin cash in for the U.S. title. It's never been done before. Ooh, that would have been interesting. Can you, believe, can you imagine that Styles versus Dillinger at the next pay per view for the the U.S. title, and then Baron Corbin cashes in on the U.S. title instead? Well, with the way it's looking and the way the U.S. title is being presented, that would have made sense because it's better. It's 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 higher ranked right now than a WWE title. I would have loved to see somebody cash in on a on a mid card title. Why not? Right. And the Dillinger and Styles match would be pretty good, but again, Derby for some reason doesn't fucking see it. They're they're blind. They're like the John Cena. They'd can't rather see they'd, it. they'd rather give us Jinder versus Randy Orton because that constitutes as a as a fucking great main event match right there. God awful. And he puts and finally not a question, but it has but it has to be said. Why would you not have Braun on Raw after dominating last week? Oh my exactly God. what we said. Exactly. No Braun, no ratings. Exactly. Look, Braun wasn't on TV and Raw was shit. <laughs> Braun equals ratings. Braun or coming Joe out too. To, Braun right? and Joe both. Braun coming out this week and attacking Lesnar would have made it better than a one. It would have put it at least at a three or a four. It could have dominated SmackDown. But you're supposed to, like you were saying earlier in the show, his monster among men doesn't even come out after kicking the shit out of Lesnar the week before. It doesn't even appear on the show. Yeah, Chuck, you can't see like, good booking, WWE. <laughs> yeah, you, you basically kill all the momentum that he built last week by having him not come out here and interrupt the freaking Brock Lesnar. It stood there and said, Suplex City, bitch. Like, great. Right. Thanks for coming out. Yeah. And um, that's so, all. Oh, nope. Go ahead. We well, Okay, well, you go ahead because we've got something to announce for Twitter oh, fans yeah, that's of the right. month well, that's for gonna August. Be, I was just going to say that's the end of the tweet, so we'll get right into that. So, oh, okay. Fan of the month for the month of August, guys. We thought long and hard about this, and uh, due to the interactions we got from him this month, and uh, he is a new follower of the podcast, we think, uh, and he gave us a lot of shout-outs on his show. So uh, I'm not even going to give a drum roll. The, the winner of the, sorry, the Twitter fan of the month for the month of August is James from That Ass Podcast. So I'll give it a little clap here. For that him. ass podcast. Yeah, go check them out, guys. They have their own podcast, that ass podcast. It has to all do with like relationship stuff, and, and they do a really, really good job. I've actually watched a couple of their episodes. Like, it's not WWE related, but they actually do a really good job, and they know their stuff, man. Like both James and Tiffany, I'm getting them both. Tw- you know, I'm gonna give them both Twitter fan of the month uh, at the same time because they both shout us out on their show. Um, 
Yeah, good I'm for... pretty sure they have talked about wrestling at some point. I think they had like an NXT. Yeah. They do wrestling as show. well. They do both, but their their main focus is like the oh, relationship yeah. thing. So yeah. it's James and on Twitter he's James K White at James underscore K underscore dubs twenty one. So if you want to go give him a follow and that way it'll lead you to the podcast Twitter account and follow them and then go subscribe to them on YouTube. They are awesome. They do some awesome work, guys. And James can do like the most uh, greatest Dusty Rhodes impersonation I've ever heard in my entire life, man. Um, it is scary how good this impersonation of Dusty yeah. Rhodes is. is. He's so good. He's so good. I, I wish I can. I'm going to pinpoint the clip. I'm, I think I might save the clip and, and put it on our Twitter account just so I can like. It, it's so good. He's so on point. And he dressed up as Dusty Rhodes in their SummerSlam party. And it was great. Oh, my God. Like he's <laughs> He's hilarious. But, guys, him and Tiffany are going to win uh, Twitter Fan of the Month. And Tiffany's Twitter is uh, uh, Tiffany Ann, and it's at Breaker814 on Twitter. And they're both the hosts of That Ass Podcast. So go check them out. So congratulations, exactly. James and Tiffany, for winning Twitter Fans of the Month for the month for, of August. We, we love the new followers, man. We always yeah. encourage new yeah. people to come to the podcast. Yeah. And before we end the podcast, I have this one piece of news that you're going to hate. Um, I don't know if you heard about this. Great. But Psycho Sid recently had an interview. Or it was like, I don't know if it was today or whatever. Psycho Sid? He's still Psych- alive? Psycho Sid, okay? You're gonna, if you liked Psycho Sid, you're going to hate him after what he said, okay? Oh, and God. I quote, I see guys like Kevin Owens and this Yakamura guy. Yeah, oh, oh, Yak- okay, you can stop there. Yakamura? <laughs> Yakamura. Okay, already I don't take anything he's about to say credible when you fucking pronounce it Yakamura. Get the fuck out of here, okay? Psycho Sid. That's just the start. So I see people like this Kevin Owens and this Yakamura guy and these other people like this. I see that and I'm going, business has got to be bad. Or they're at a point where they don't care. That's the only thing I know. While Sid isn't a fan of Kevin Owens or Yakamura, he does have praise for Roman Reigns. But only in the context of him being better than Owens. And I quote. What? And hang on. Let me finish the quote. I think he's one of the better talents they've got, Vicious said of Roman Reigns. He looks credible. He looks good. He's got good energy. If we're going to compare him to anybody, let's compare him to that fat guy in the t-shirt, Kevin Owens. I think he's light years ahead of that guy. End quote. I should even be mad because I take all of that with zero credibility. Don't care if he's a WWE legend. He knows fucking nothing. It's not absolutely nothing. He can't even say Nakamura. He says Yakamura. There's no why. How are you getting that confused? You think that Roman Reigns is light years away or, 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 or light years from Ro- from Kevin Owens, a guy who's been in the industry and wrestling way before Roman Reigns ever was. Yeah, get the fuck out of here, Psycho Sid. You have zero credibility. Unfucking believable. When, when I when I saw that, I literally had to screenshot it, and I was like, I have to talk about this, about this on the show because this was like ridiculous. Psycho the fact Sid that he said sucks. That Roman Reigns. <laughs> I just lost all respect for Psycho Sid, and it wasn't much. But the fact that he said that this fat guy in the t-shirt, Kevin Owens, has nothing on the on Roman Reigns just goes to show fat guy you know, what 90s wrestling looked like. This guy's still living in the past with Michael Hayes and Vince McMahon. This guy is perfect for the creative team, 100%. You're right. He's Roman probably Reigns on the would creative team. Roman Reigns would have been great in the 90s. He would have fit in great with those awful wrestlers. Like exactly Psycho what Michael Chow just said in the Kevin chat Matt. there. <laughs> That's why they call him a psycho. This is why they should be calling him delusional Sid. What the hell was he smoking saying that? Honest, mm. I want to know how much backlash that guy's going to get from that statement. Because mm. Was he drinking the Vince and Kevin Dunn and Kevin Hayes Kool-Aid that day? Delusional Sid. Delusional Sid. That's what this fucking so, guy is. We had to end with that since it was already a horrendous episode of Raw SmackDown. Might as well end with a horrendous quote. I'm so glad I got to hear that. <laughs> so glad. Uh, other than that, guys. That is going to wrap it up for week number 20 of the Lowdown Show right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. We are a Canadian WWE podcast that talks about Raw, we talk about SmackDown, and we give you our review and reactions from this past week. We also have our top 10 list of 10 moments where we give our uh, top 10, our list of 10 moments. We give our superstar that makes the list and our superstar that is a, a perfect 10 
from the week. We also read your fan questions out there. And we also, once a month, do our Twitter fan of the month unveiling. You can also go follow our podcast on Twitter at NoHoldsBardWP. You can follow myself at RealKyleMasters. You can follow at CorporateCappy and his Twitter account as well. Go subscribe to us on YouTube at youtube.com slash NHBWR. Hit that bell icon for all upload updates and make sure you subscribe to us on Spreaker, iTunes, and Stitcher and give us a five-star rating. That would be lovely and it would be glorious if you do. (laughs) Other than that, I'm the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. Every week on the Lowdown Show, I am continuing to be joined by my corporate co-host. He is the blissful boss, Mr. Corbin himself. Corporate Cappy. The blissed off boss this week. Blissful boss. I'm doing it right this time. I said it right. And guys, it is now time to end the show. And as we always do, we remind you to keep it on the lowdown. What you gonna do about it? Bring it on. Is that what you got? Bring it on. So what you gonna do about it? Bring it on. Gonna keep your sorry ass, but what you gonna do?